Yes, as Bruce said, I work with the Karolinska Institute, which is a medical um, university. And we're part of Sageya, uh, where we look at the communities of practice related to health. And for those of you who were here yesterday, I told you that I'm going to talk about the survey we did uh, in one of these communities of practice to see what kind of needs they have. And uh, this is, uh, we've just written a paper on this, as so we've submitted hope and hope to have it published soon. And um, I'm presenting this on behalf of my co-authors listed there. And the study is actually called a web-based survey of needs of information, resources, research tools, connectivity, and infrastructure among uh, African pharmacology scientists. And just as a little bit of background, um, a lot of African scientists have been trained in high-income countries, uh, but when they want to go back to their home institutions, there might not be the technological uh, or resources uh, needed for them to be able to continue their work there. Those who do return and remain in Africa often have limited resources to maintain and develop um, strong research programs and institutions. And just to show a little bit on this, uh, we saw something similar this morning, but this is um, a quite recent review article um, looking at published scientific articles from Africa. And this one is uh, specifically for cardiovascular diseases. And you see on the graph um, that the number of publications coming out of Sub-Saharan Africa is increasing all the time, which is good. The top line there, uh, the gray uh, circles, that's sub-Saharan African countries in collaboration with uh, international consortia, either single or multiple ones. The red line, uh, sub-Saharan African countries with uh, multiple international partners. But then you see the bottom line there, the gray one, which is just collaborative um, uh, consortia between sub-Saharan African countries. And you see that's just above zero, so very, very few articles coming out of just sub-Saharan African collaborations um, and actually still African publications are only around 2.4 percent of the global output in this field which is quite low and I think someone yesterday mentioned an even lower um, figure so this should be changed and uh, because of this um, the African pharmacology science gateway was um, launched to be able to uh, enable collaboration between sub-Saharan African partners. And this was actually done as part of the EI for Africa project, which was the precursor to Saigea. And uh, then they enabled this, uh, the African Institute of Biomedical Science and Technology in Harare to set up this African Pharmacology Science Gateway, and together with seven other partners. And I showed you the African Pharmacology Science Gateway yesterday, and it's on the um, Africa, science, uh, Africa Grid Science Gateway. And the pilot is already there, and it's been there for a few years. It's got lots of different tools related to research in uh, pharmacology or other biomedical sciences too. Um, but the challenge has been that, so we've got this uh, pharmacology science gateway in a, in a pilot form, but very few scientists actually use it or are even aware that it exists and the potential it has. So uh, what we wanted to do was to try to identify the kind of uh, the research interests among Afro African biomedical scientists, uh, the kind of research capacity they have, uh, what they can share with others, and what priority areas of need they had that could actually be helped by Saigea through some kind of e-infrastructure or a science gateway. Uh, so what we did, did we do? We, had, we made a cross-sectional web-based questionnaire survey uh, conducted over a six-month period. And um, this was developed by researchers who work with uh, pharmacological and biomedical science research. Uh, we used the Lyme survey, and uh, Wackren helped us set up everything and send out this survey. And the survey had four different sections, just uh, social demographics of these researchers, their current research areas and interests, and also what uh, the available skills and resources they had. And then finally, of course, what needs and knowledge gaps they had. So the question was then also how to reach out to potential users and who would they be. So we started out by looking at um, members of different groups on the African continent related to pharmacological research. And one of these was the medical uh, Medicines Utilization Research Group in Africa, uh, which was started a few years ago. And um, 
So we got a list of their members, and we also contacted the International Union of um, Basic and Clinical Pharmacology to look at, they also have different subsections on the African continent, and we also managed to um, contact their members. So all the participants were invited through email. In total, uh, almost 500 individuals across uh, the continent. And they all got reminders at three different time uh, periods to see if they would actually respond. And in the end, we had 118 responses, which is about 25% response rate, uh, which is actually more or less normal for this kind of survey. Not too bad, we felt. Not all the responses are complete, so not everyone has responded to all the different um, questions. But this is just to see where the individuals were from who responded. And the vast majority were Nigerians, which is also because the vast majority of the people on the email list were Nigerians, because they were, a lot of them were members of these different uh, groups. But there are also people from many other countries, South Africa, Botswana, Ethiopia, were quite well represented. We also have one person who came from Finland, but that was also an African, actually, who lived there at the moment doing a postdoc. And uh, you see that they were all, um, these were all researchers. Uh, many of them had the PhDs or uh, were PhD students. And um, when we look at their research interests, of course, the majority were interested in drug research, which is not so strange in a group of researchers looking at pharmacology. Uh, but they also mentioned the infectious and tropical diseases. And a lot of them also looked at non-communicable diseases, which is more and more increasing, becoming a more popular area uh, in Africa too at the moment. But lots of different fields were mentioned. Uh, we also asked them about uh, what kind of skills or resources they had, and particularly the ones that could be transferable, so the ones that they could actually share uh, with, with others. And so, of course, the, many of them had clinical research skills. Many also had spe specific laboratory analytical skills and new specific techniques. And uh, in many places, there were also human resources that could be shared. And a lot of people mentioned, actually, postgraduate students that could be used in exchange programs to help with their research projects. Uh, and then when we came down to the needs, there, there were a lot of training needs. Um, there were specific areas mentioned. So for instance, uh, drug utilization research, uh, pharmacokinetic modeling, pharmacometrics training. And they, researchers also wanted access to different tools. And again, I mentioned a few here that they mentioned. Um, of course, laboratory equipment and infrastructure was also asked for. And then funding, as always, um, always comes up. But network opportunities as well. Uh, but we felt that when we looked at the needs of these people and uh, what the potential of the science gateways were these uh, matched quite well so the needs in summary were you know need a, they need more colleagues or a network they need advice or more access to evidence uh, access to data and cost-effective tools and applications and these are all things that could actually be um, provided by a science gateway so the science gateway has a shared virtual space for collaboration within a certain research area uh, could have an intuitive interface for distance-based uh, collaboration with then easy access to data and tools and applications. And um, also, if you have a collection of computer resources at multiple locations, as we have heard today, also you could provide um, service to support, upload, search, and manage, and download, and store data. Um, so in conclusion, we felt that this survey was uh, quite useful in identifying the key priority areas of these uh, African researchers within clinical pharmacology or ph pharmacology. And uh, our findings will guide the, the further development of the pharmacology science gateway. We also think that this, could, uh, this kind of survey could uh, help in assist or in mapping available resources, both the human ones and also material researchers. Uh, to facilitate collaboration and optimize the um, use of the scarce uh, resources. And uh, possibly also a similar approach could be used to identify areas of need in other groups um, in different fields. Um, so yeah, that was it. Thank you.